Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I want to talk about WebAssembly for a moment. And in case you guys have never heard about it, WebAssembly is a project that has the backing of Google, Microsoft, Facebook, and Apple. It was started a couple years ago as a faster way for, for browsers to be able to run graphics intensive applications. Going back about 10 years ago, the browsers implemented a feature and enabling users to be able to use their browser to communicate with a uh, the, the graphics card directly in order to compile and run their program. So it allowed for 3D graphics and uh, pretty cool things that you could do uh, inside of a browser. Like here's Chrome experiments, and these are all just experiments that are using WebGL. So it's using um, you know the graphics card directly on your machine. So originally people balked at the idea because they thought that there were security concerns. Typically, JavaScript is very uh, limited in, into where it has access or what it has access to on a user's machine. It can't write files and things like that. Um, so it's very limited. But this uh, this opened up the door so that you could actually, like I said, run, run things within your. Uh, I'm not going to use my camera here. That's kind of cool that it uses my camera. But uh, anyway. So the, the problem with WebGL is that you can see here, I have a lot of things running on my machine, but it's still pretty choppy. It's kind of, it's, you know, it's kind of bad, really. I mean, some of them look better than others, and depending on the way they wrote the code, it, it can, um, you know, have an, an impact on how this stuff gets displayed. Like, that's a nice one there. But uh, anyway, so WebGL is, it, it's, an, it's a port to the graphics communication, which is OpenGL, and OpenGL dates back literally decades. It's a, it's a graphics specification, essentially. It's a way that you communicate with graphics, but it's language independent. So you're going to have, uh, you're going to write OpenGL in, in different programming languages. It's just, it's a, um, it's like, it's, it's an API, basically. So OpenGL goes back. WebGL is basically OpenGL, but for the browser. Here it is 10 years later, and there's still not wide adoption with WebGL. So it makes us wonder, like, you know, what is the future of this? Is this ever going to pick up like we thought it was? When are we going to have virtual reality with our, within our browser so that we can have a, a headset attached to our computer and we can work, you know, work in 3D um, or full virtual reality? Um, so those are all, I think, on the horizon and really not that far away. But uh, there's a couple of roadblocks. Number one, the WebGL specification or the API is just not fast enough in order to be able to do these graphics intensive things. And that's because it's being run on the JavaScript runtime, which, you know, even with the Chrome V8 engine, which is what Node.js is written in, um, the Chrome V8 engine for executing JavaScript is extremely fast. But it's just not fast enough, not compared to C or C++, which you find a lot of games written in. And WebAssembly is hoping to fix that. So is WebAssembly going to replace JavaScript? The answer to that is maybe and probably not. But I'll explain in just a moment what it will do, uh, at least what I think so, uh, what I think will happen. And, um, and if I could step back for just a moment, Google's been working on this problem for quite some time. They had something called Native Client, which uh, they had been trying to release for quite a few years, actually. And the problem with Native Client is that immediately it was not it was not um, welcomed with open arms by Mozilla, by the creator of the JavaScript language, which is Brandon Ike, um, or even Microsoft or Apple. They weren't jumping on board either. So Google was basically left to, to develop this native client, which only ran in the latest versions of Chrome, and nobody else supported it. So they ended up getting rid of this, and they scrapped it. You can see on October 12th, they, well, they didn't scrap it all together, but it said, well, it's been de-staffed. So yeah, I guess it's been on thrown on the scrap heap as of last month. So the good news is, is that this WebAssembly which is machine level bytecode that runs inside of the browser, that has the backing of Brandon Ike, Mozilla, Google, Microsoft, and Apple. So the big players are all working together on this specification, which is good news because anytime they come together, it typically means that we're going to change the direction of the web in some way, shape, or form. So here is WebAssembly. Now, the issue with WebAssembly is it's made for you know very fast execution. And in order to write to it, 
this WebAssembly language does not have standard types that we've seen in C Sharp and Python. You don't have like strings and things like that. It's um, it, it, there's very limited types, and it's going to be very very different writing code directly for WebAssembly. So in the sense that nobody's going to want to use WebAssembly over JavaScript to manipulate the DOM uh, for you know fancy animation menus and things like that. You're just not going to use this in, in replace of JavaScript. That said, though, if you needed to run a video game inside of the browser, you would absolutely use something like this, and you would have to in order to be successful. Now, one of the things I wanted to show you, in order to actually use WebAssembly, which is being supported right now in its early stages, because it just got an, uh, an MVP release last month, or actually maybe last week, a couple weeks ago maybe, very, very recent, it got a, a release, and it's actually supported on Chrome Canary. Now, um, Chrome Canary is basically Chrome, but it has all the latest versions with the daily or the nightly builds and everything. And when you install this, it's not going to install over top of your existing Chrome uh, that you have. You can actually run this side by side. So I would suggest that any developers out there that are interested, go ahead and download this to your machine because it doesn't hurt, especially if you're trying to port uh, something or test some, some new experimental feature out. This is the best way to do it. And I'm going to show you an example um, of running a uh, some you know, WebAssembly inside of the browser, which uh, which uses the uh, Unity game engine. So Unity game engine, even though you can write your scripts and tie everything together using C Sharp, uh, ultimately the core libraries are written in C and C++. So uh, effectively, this WebAssembly is able to handle all that. All right, so with Chrome Canary installed, if we went ahead and we navigate to this, uh, actually not that one. If we navigate to this link right here, webassembly.org forward slash demo, it will tell you that you need to actually enable WebAssembly. So even though in Chrome Canary, this is like experimental times two, because even in the experimental Canary version, this is not on by default. So we need to actually uh, specify that. So you just paste this right in Chrome flags enable WebAssembly and then you want to go ahead and say enable and then relaunch the browser. Alright, so now if we go back to this page we can go ahead and play this thing and now you'll notice that the load time is relatively slow which is um, I mean, it's not out of the ordinary. Like right now, there should be some sort of splash deal going on saying that that something's loading. But um, ultimately, you have quite a bit of information that has to be downloaded. So anytime you have a, a decently complex video game, you typically have uh, a pretty good download time and install time. And you know, with web assembly, it's really no different. You're going to have to have you're going to have to have um, you know some loading times and probably. All right, so we're going to check this joint out. So keep in mind, it's probably a little bit um, choppy. It's probably a little bit choppy because of my video, but it actually runs really smooth. So this is pretty sophisticated for just um, you know simple running in the browser. And you can see that it's a step above what we were looking at before. If I know how to actually play this game. All right, anyway. So if you want to read more about this, um, you can definitely go to the docs right now, but there is going to be a lot of changes with this uh, this project line here. But one of the interesting things that you'll know is that, or that you'll notice right away really, is that it's not like coding Python or C Sharp or Java. It's very, very difficult in, in the sense that it's like more machine level, lower to the hardware, which is what you need in order for this thing to be fast. Now, where this is going to end up competing with JavaScript in a lot of ways is that you can use tools like C Sharp or Python, which can write code in, in a way that gets compiled down to WebAssembly format. So essentially, we can write WebAssembly 
in the sense that we can write Python because Python's written on top of C. So Python is easier than writing C. The same thing can be said of you know, some language that might be built on top of WebAssembly that is easier than, than JavaScript. But where I think JavaScript is still going to have a foothold is that, like I said, for DOM manipulation and things like that, you typically don't need this crazy execution. However, there's always the possibility that maybe this, this, you know, this subset language that's built on top of um, this WebAssembly it becomes maybe better, better to control, uh, more type save. Maybe, you know, th there could be benefits editors, who knows, that makes it easier to write JavaScript, even the standard DOM manipulation JavaScript within, you know, this higher level language that compiles to WebAssembly versus just regular JavaScript. I mean, we've talked about some of the uh, the problems with the JavaScript community and things like that. I mean, you have TypeScript, CoffeeScript, all these different things that try to pop up to basically take away developing directly in JavaScript. And you know, obviously the, the community has been pushing for something else. So I think that there is going to be some push to try to get something in, in replace of, of JavaScript. I don't know that it's actually going to be successful 100%. Uh, but I do know that this is going to be the best thing that we've seen so far when it comes to actually being able to have virtual reality inside of a browser, be able to play a game inside of a browser, and you know, being able, being able to utilize WebGL to its fullest extent. Um, JavaScript's just not fast enough, even with the V8 engine. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think, and have a good day. Make sure you subscribe, vote up the video. Bye. Hey, guys, so a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this, in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.